The Ruckus is bringing the party to the Metro, June 7th and 8th at Adventureland Resort, with Friday headliner Chris Young. I've got some famous Saturday headliner Jake Owen. Yeah, call up in a southern sub. Russell Dickerson, Maddie and Tay, Lauren Elena, Brian Kelly, and more. Festival tickets include access to the theme park and water park. Get your tickets at ruckusiowa.com. Use code word Steve for 25% discount for weekend VIP and weekend general admission tickets. Welcome to Library with Ms. Amanda on Steve Shetler Media. The, um, last week, my trivia question had to do with our summer reading programs um, and summer reading programs just in general. My question was, when were summer reading programs officially started? So the very first um, summer reading program um, was very different from the ones we do now. It started in 1896 at the Cleveland, Cleveland Public Library. Um, by head librarian Linda Eastman. She um, was a huge advocate for the importance of children's literature and distributed a list of book recommendations through local schools, encouraging kids to get as far down the list as they could. So this was basically the very first reading log. Um, they have come a long way since then. <clears throat> and um, our reading logs this year for our library look a little something like this. It's the same premise. It's all about reading. So on our reading logs this year, for every 10 minutes you read, you get to color in a book on your shelf. And once your shelf is complete, you will have read 500 minutes of reading. Um, that's not quite um, nine hours of reading. So over the summer, that's not a ton of reading, um, but it is a good start. So if you complete your 500 minutes of reading, you turn this log back in and you get a free ice cream from Walkers. You get a pass to go to the Blank Park Zoo and then you get another prize of your choosing. Um, we also have our, sorry, I wasn't gonna talk about all this, but I'm, I'm going to. So we have our activity um, challenge too. So we have these papers and on each side are different um, activities that you can do. So like make lemonade, play in the sprinkler, go out for ice cream, read a new book. So for every 10 of these items you complete, you can bring it back to the library. We'll check it out and you get another prize. So there's 32 prizes or 32 activities on here. So you complete 10, you get a prize, complete another 10, you get a prize, complete another 10, you get a prize, and then complete the last two that completes the entire thing and you get another prize. So you can get four prizes from that one. And then we also have, I don't have a copy of it in front of me, but we have our community service challenge again. So that is 15 items that gets your kid out and about and helping the community. So um, the items are like, um, there's some library ones like donate a puzzle or a used book to the library. Um, there's make a treat for some of your local heroes. So you can make some treats for like the firefighters or um, maybe the garbage guys or the city people or your librarians, whatever. Um, make a treat for somebody that you admire. Um, there's pick up trash at the local parks. There is um, write a letter to someone you admire. So it could be a teacher, a friend, a parent, a grandparent, a male person. Um, there's 15 of these items that get the kids out and about in the community and recognizing people who do um, a lot of things to keep our community going. Um, if they complete that, they can turn it in for a prize as well. Um, but yeah, the first reading program was in 1896 and it was literally just, um, she gave them a book, a list of books and they read just as many as they could. Um, so my question this week has to do with reading books. And I thought this was really interesting. So um, before I had children, um, my goal each year was to read 200 books. Um, that wasn't a huge goal for me because I would read a lot. Um, especially at nighttime, I would have some downtime. I would, you know, I could read most, uh, most of the books I could read in one or two nights. So 200 was not a huge number for me. Um, but nowadays I'm lucky if 
I'm lucky if I'm gonna get like 10 books read this year um, that are not picture books. I read a lot of picture books to um, my daughter. But my question this week is how many books does the average American read per year? So just the average Joe, how many books per year does the average person read in America? And we'll come back to that at the end of my program. My two books that you might want to add to your read list, um, there's a new Stephen King out. Oh, I love Stephen King. He is like the king of horror thrillers. This is his new one called You Like It Darker. If you like um, an easy to read quick book, this would be it. It is short stories, so it's not, this is a bunch of short stories in it, not just one big novel. So um, I'll read you just a little bit about it. From the legendary storyteller and master of short fiction, Stephen King comes an extraordinary new collection of 12 short stories, many never before published, and some of his best ever. King's ability to surprise, amaze, and bring us both terror and solace remains unsurpassed. Each of these stories holds its own thrills, joys, and mysteries. Each feels iconic. You like it darker? You got it. So there's 12 short stories here. Um, they are about fate, mortality, luck, and the folds of reality where anything can happen. So if you like Stephen King, these, this is a new one. I will be cataloging it today, so it will be available this afternoon for checkout. Um, so Ruth Ware is another one of my favorite authors, and she is a she writes thrillers as well, but they're psychological. So um, it really, really gets your brain thinking. Um, the first book she ever wrote was called The Woman in Cabin 10, and it is one of the ones that I recommend the most to people who like thrillers um she is just a great great person i've reached out to her personally to talk to her about her books and she always messages back so she's an incredible author this is her new one and i love this cover i don't know if you can tell on here but it's kind of like shiny and like i don't know it's super cool this is her new one ruth wears one perfect couple i'll read you a little bit about it lila is in a bit of a rut her postdoctoral research has fizzled out. She's pretty sure they won't extend her contract, and things with her boyfriend Nico, an aspiring actor, aren't going great. When the opportunity arises for Nico to join the cast of a new reality show, One Perfect Couple, she decides to try out with him. A whirlwind audition process later, Lila finds herself whisked off to a tropical paradise with Nico, boating through the Indian Ocean towards Ever After Island where the two of them will compete against four other couples in order to win a cash prize. But no, not long after they arrive on the island, things start to go wrong. After the first challenge leaves everyone rattled and angry, an overnight storm takes matters from bad to worse. Cut off from the mainland by miles of ocean, deprived of their phones and unable to contact the crew that brought them there, the group must band together for survival. As tensions run high and fresh water runs low, Lila finds that this TV show is all too real and the stakes are life or death. A fast-paced, spellbinding thriller rife with intrigue and characters that feel so true to life, this novel proves once again that Ruth Ware is a queen of psychological suspense. That's Ruth Ware, One Perfect Couple. Um, both of those will be available to check out today. All right, upcoming programs at the library. So our book club is reading um, a book called The Cactus for their book club on June 15th. If you would like a copy, we have plenty here. Just stop at the front desk. Um, and even if you can't make it on June 15th to the chat and you want, would like to read what the book club is reading, um, you can still read it. You don't have to come to the chats. We have a lot of people that read it and then just chat to us about it at the front desk. Um, and even if you don't get through the whole book and would like to come to the chat, you still can. So June 15th, the book club will be talking about the cactus. Cook the book. We just had our um, cook the book for this month, um, this past Monday, and it was delicious. Um, I made an herbed chicken salad sandwich that was so good. Um, so many great dishes. Um, our next one will be July 1st, and we're featuring the book Gooseberry Patch, Quick and Easy Family Favorites. And it is at the front desk if you'd like to um, pick a recipe and join that program. Our freezer meals, the last day to register, will be next Friday, the 14th um, for June. If you look on our Facebook page, I have June and July's menus up. Um, 
both months will feature some items that will be really good for grilling or um, camping or cooking over a campfire. Um, so June 14th is the last day to sign up for June's freezer meals. Make sure you get a hold of us before then. Our summer program started this past Monday. We started Monday with llama story time. So we had um, two llamas come and visit us on Monday, Pedro and Stinker um, from Mulberry Acre Farms. Um, thank you, Alicia, for bringing the llamas down. We read a story about Troy the llama, and then the kiddos, kiddos got to go outside <clears throat> and meet Pedro and Stinker and touch them and um, learn some fun things about llamas. So, um, yeah, that kicked off our summer programs. Um, Tuesdays in June, we have fourth grade and up from one to two. Wednesdays from one to two, we have second, third grade, and two, or Thursdays, kindergarten first is one to two p.m. Um, and Fridays throughout June, we will be featuring a movie a matinee from noon to 1.30, so make sure you stop by and check that out. We'll have popcorn and water available. Um, bring a bean bag or a blanket or whatever you need to get cozy and come join us for a movie matinee on Fridays. My patron question of the week. So at the end of our summer programs, um, all the kiddos who, uh, who actually registered with us get a bag of goodies. So there's some um, small prizes in there. There's some coupons for like some free ice cream. Um, sometimes we're able to put in passes to like the Blank Park Zoo or um, movie theater tickets or, you know, it's just got a whole bunch of stuff in there. But it has our exclusive library shirts for the year in them as well. You have to register to get our goodie bags with the shirts. So make sure if your kiddos are not registered that you do that. Also in the bags are tickets with their names on them. So my question of the week is how do my kids earn tickets for grand prizes for the summer? So the tickets in their goodie bags are earned throughout the summer. So they get tickets for coming to our events, they get tickets for volunteering at our events, they get tickets for completing their reading logs, community task, um, community service tasks, activity tasks, um, and um, what else? They earn tickets for all the things that they do this summer at the library. So a lot of it is coming to programs and completing your reading logs, um, community service stuff, and your activity sheets. Um, so you earn the tickets and then at the end of the summer when we pass out our goodie bags we will have boxes with pictures of all the grand prizes so the two big ones we normally do are a new bicycle and a Kindle Fire um, but there are usually at least 20 grand prizes 15 to 20 grand prizes to choose from um, so the kids just use those tickets put them in the boxes and then um, before our big pool party at the end of the summer in August, we will draw names for the winners of all our grand prize um, uh, items, and then they will come and pick them up. So, if you would like more tickets, come to more uh, come to more programs, um, complete your reading logs, complete all of the things that we have, and you will get all of the tickets, and um, you will get more chances to win our grand prizes. So, that is my patron question of the week. Um, my trivia question of the week is about how many books you read. So I don't know about you guys and how many you read. We have some patrons here that just fly through books. They check out probably six every week and they just fly through them. And you know, I can't wait to retire at some point way, 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 way in the future. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere um, and have some more time to read. Um, every once in a while I get an hour or so to read, but usually Evie keeps me pretty busy. But how many books does the average American read per year? So the average American reads only 12 books per year. So that's one a month. That's not bad. Like if you can read one book a month, I think you're doing pretty good. And that is the average. So 12 books a year. And fun fact, reading for just six minutes, six, just six minutes, a day can reduce your stress levels by 68%. That's a scientific study that they did. <clears throat> I'm not sure how they gave a percentile to stress levels, but um, reading for six minutes apparently can reduce your stress by 68%. So stop by the library, get a book, 
Get a magazine, get a newspaper, anything that you can read for six minutes um, to help you reduce your stress. Um, we are here to help you out. So stop by if you need some book recommendations. Um, talk to myself or my front desk staff and um, we will tell you what our favorites are and maybe they can be your new favorites. That's all I have for this week and I will see you guys next week.